Hello everybody and welcome back to the YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through my buying guide for a programming laptop. Now I get asked the question all the time, is four gigs of RAM enough? Is eight gigs of RAM enough? Do I need an i5? Do I need an i7? And so in this video, I'm gonna focus heavily on the specs of a computer and just kind of what you should look for in terms of specs and features in any laptop that you're gonna buy for programming. So I'm gonna start with the bare minimum requirements, the absolute minimum I would recommend for any device that you're gonna use for programming. Then I'll give you kind of my recommended configuration for a decent experience. I'll talk about some nice to have features and then we'll get in and talk about some specific exceptions. So say you're working with, you know, 3D games, you're doing iOS apps, what kind of machines you might need for that. And finally, I'll end off by just walking through a few laptops that look good to me that I would personally recommend. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and talk about what you should look for in a programming laptop. So I'm gonna get started by discussing the bare minimum requirements that I would recommend for a programming laptop. Of course, you could go lower than these if you're really on a budget, but I would personally recommend saving up until you can buy a device that has these kind of specs, just because your experience is gonna be much better and you're gonna be using that really cheap device maybe for a year or two before you decide to upgrade anyways when all of the new software can no longer run on it. Anyways, let me go through the specs. So starting with system memory, I'm gonna recommend you have at least four gigabytes of system RAM. This is because a lot of programs require at minimum four gigabytes of RAM to run. And if you wanna run multiple programs at the same time without having them be drastically slower than they usually would be, you're gonna want four gigs of RAM. Even in today's age, that's a little bit low, but for some basic programming tasks, that's totally fine and four gigs should be fine. Next, I'm gonna recommend you get a quad core processor. So this is gonna bring the price up on the computer that you're gonna be purchasing. It's gonna push it you know, over a few hundred dollars probably, but buying something like a Pentium or a Celeron processor, which are dual core processors, they're just gonna be very slow and for programming, it's just not gonna be a good experience whatsoever. I'd highly recommend saving up to get a quad core processor, something like an i3 or an i3 equivalent on the AMD side. I'm not quite sure exactly what that model number would be. After that, I would recommend having about 120 gigabytes of disk space. Yes, you could go with something like 60 gigs of disk space, but there is some quite large packages and applications when you're programming and combined with say a Windows install or a Linux install or whatever operating system it is, you're gonna be running out of storage quite quickly if you don't have at least 100 gigabytes. After that, we're gonna be talking about operating system. What you're gonna to wanna to look for typically is Windows, Mac, or Linux. Those are kind of the three options you have. Yes, you could use something like iOS, so you could buy maybe a cheap mobile phone and try to use that for programming, or maybe an iPad or a tablet or something like that, but you're gonna be highly limited to what you can download, what programs you can use, and what code you can run if you don't get one of those three mentioned operating systems. Another thing to be careful with is look out for devices that are running, running Windows S mode. That is kind of like the mobile version of Windows. It comes with a lot less features than your standard Windows and only allows you to download things from the Windows Store. You can turn off Windows S mode and put it to a full-fledged Windows install, but that uses a lot more system resources. It's gonna be very slow on that device if it's meant to run Windows S mode. So personally, I would recommend going with Linux if you are comfortable with that operating system. Something like Ubuntu is really easy to get used to if you're not coming from a Linux background and it will be much faster on a device like this. So that's kind of what I'm recommending for the bare minimum essentials. Of course, if you can't afford that, you can definitely code simply using any kind of web browser. So whatever device you have, if it has a web browser, you can write code and you can actually start learning and experimenting and that's totally fine. But to start doing anything locally, you're gonna want the specs that I just mentioned. So I'm gonna quickly list three websites here that I think you should consider if you're someone who has a lower end machine or just wanna experiment with coding and don't wanna worry about installing and downloading anything. First one is called Replit. This is a browser-based IDE, so REPL.IT. Totally free, you can write and test code in the cloud. Next one is Google Collaboratory. This is specifically for Python users, but you can actually run a Jupyter Notebook and execute that in the cloud with hardware acceleration as, all, as well for free. So that's like having access to a GPU to train a machine learning model or something like that. And then finally, there's VS Code Code Spaces, 
I actually don't know how new this is and how accessible it is, but I do know that this is Visual Studio Code in the cloud. And that essentially means you can use a full-fledged code editor on the cloud on another device totally for free. So check those three things out if you have a lower tier machine or you're just looking to kind of get started without needing to download, install, and set everything up on your own machine. So now time for my recommendation for kind of a decent PC that's going to give you a good experience that's not going to be super fast, but is definitely not going to be slow and is going to be able to achieve kind of all the programming stuff that you want. So I'll start by recommending eight gigabytes of system memory. You really don't need any more than this. Eight gigabytes is plenty when you're doing programming. And I personally can't think of many situations where I've been doing some kind of programming stuff and needed more than eight gigabytes of memory. Now, of course, if you're doing something with machine learning, loading large data sets, or you want just a ton of different things open at once, maybe you're running like three instances of Android Studio, then you might want some more system memory. But eight gigabytes is enough. You definitely do not need more. Then I would recommend a i5 processor or higher. You also probably could get away with an i3, but sticking with kind of the last recommendation, just a quad core processor, something modern and something that's just gonna be kind of fast, right? That's what we're looking for. So an i5 equivalent or an i5, I don't know what all the AMD model numbers are, otherwise I would list them. Next, you're gonna wanna go with probably about 250 gigabytes of storage or more. Again, really depends on what you're gonna be using this for and how much you're gonna be downloading, but I feel like 250 gigs is enough for most people. If you have a ton of different applications, you might wanna go up to 500 gigabytes, and a nice feature to look for here would be an SSD. So not all computers come with SSDs. I know it's much more common now, but looking for some kind of SSD just means your storage is gonna be a little bit faster, and that's just gonna make for a better experience experience, especially kind of in your day-to-day -day use on the operating system, loading things up, moving files around, so on. I also like to mention here to look for stuff that has a USB-C port. This is kind of a newer port, I guess, but this is pretty important if you want to think about future-proofing your device. A lot of the accessories that are coming out now are USB-C. Of course, you could dongle stuff, but it's just nice to have a really fast port on the computer, and I always recommend people look out for USB-C. Next, I'd recommend that you look for something that has a large screen if this is gonna be the only device you use. So if you don't have a desktop at home, if you're not planning on plugging in an external monitor, I'd really recommend you go with something that's 14 inches or larger. Yes, you can go with the 12 inch screens or the 11 inch screens, but I find programming, at least for myself, if I wanna have multiple things open on the screen, it's really nice to have that extra inch or two of screen, uh, screen real estate, especially when you're scrolling through large code files. I find it can actually make you a bit more efficient. And of course, it's just nicer to have that extra bit of space. So I always recommend that. And then of course, you're gonna wanna look for a decent keyboard on the laptop. Of course, if you're working at home, you know, you can plug into a monitor, you can buy an external keyboard and mouse and you can just use the laptop. But if this is gonna be something where you're on the go all the time, you're actually using the laptop keyboard, look for something that you're gonna enjoy typing on. I know I've heard that Lenovo has really good keyboards uh, and I've had a Lenovo laptop that I've used and I can definitely say it's probably the best keyboard I've seen on a laptop. Other than that, that's really all you're looking for for a laptop for programming. There's nothing special that you need. You don't need a graphics card, just eight gigs of RAM, modern processor, enough storage, big screen, and a nice keyboard. That's really what you're looking for. You can get all of that for probably under $800. So that is kind of my recommendation for the mid-tier, um, you know, mid-tier programming laptop. No, you're not going to be able to game a ton on this. Um, you know, it's not going to be the best thing ever, but for programming, that's really all you need. Now, last thing I'll say here, if you're looking for something that's a bit better, kind of some nice to have features, maybe you've got an extra few hundred bucks in the budget, looking for something that has a lower end graphics card, maybe with two gigabytes of video memory or four gigabytes will definitely be great if you wanna do something like a little bit of video editing, content creation, maybe you wanna play a few video games, whatever it may be. Having some kind of dedicated graphics card is gonna be a great investment um, and it just, you know, something to look out for in a nice to have feature. Also looking for some things that have higher than a nine, uh, 1920 by 1080 display. So higher than 1080p, like a 2K display or a 4K display is just gonna make the screen that much nicer to look at. And again, a nice to have if you have the extra bit of budget. Finally, you could go to up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, 
definitely not necessary, but if you have the money, 16 gigs is probably worth it and you will see a little bit of a speed increase. So that is kind of my recommendation for the mid-tier PC. Now I'm gonna talk about some exceptions, or sorry, mid-tier laptop. I'm gonna talk about some exceptions now and things you might wanna consider if you're doing some specific programming related tasks. So I'll quickly list a few exceptions here to keep in mind if you're a specific type of developer. First, if you wanna develop anything for iOS, so you wanna make iOS apps, so you wanna make Mac applications, you're gonna need a Mac operating system. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. That's what we have to deal with. And you just need a Mac if you wanna develop anything or actually push it, sorry, to the App Store for iOS, for iPad, whatever, any you know Mac related operating system. Next, if you're doing anything related to 3D modeling, 3D graphics, 3D games, you're gonna want a graphics card and probably a decent one in your system. This is simply because you probably will not be able to test the code that you write unless you have something that can actually run it. And depending on how intensive the 3D stuff is that you're doing, you're probably gonna want a graphics card. Next, if you are a data scientist or someone that's dealing with extremely large data sets and you don't wanna deal with having to batch everything out, you probably want more RAM in your system. Now that is simply because if you're loading really large data sets or doing data pre-processing or whatever it may be, it's just helpful to have at least say 16 gigs of RAM or 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, although I'm sure you're probably dealing with files much larger than that, but just keep that in mind that if you wanna be able to load that much into RAM, well, you're gonna need that much RAM. Next, if you're doing machine learning and you wanna do model training locally on your machine, you're gonna want a graphics card in there that's CUDA enabled, so a NVIDIA graphics card. Uh, that is simply because the major frameworks like PyTorch, TensorFlow can utilize CUDA and that graphics card to actually accelerate training. And well, if you wanna do it locally, you should have a graphics card. Of course, a lot of these things you can mitigate by just you know running virtual machines or going in the cloud and renting out compute power. But if you wanna avoid that, then keep those few things in mind. So what I'm gonna do now is just show you a few laptops that I found on Amazon and just browsing the web that look to me to be decent value. Now keep in mind that I have not used any of these laptops and I'm very hesitant to recommend them simply because I don't have them in front of me and I'm not actually able to test and try them out. But these are just ones that I saw that look to be decent value. So I figured I'd show you and you can kind of get an idea of the price range of these machines and what I would consider purchasing um, had I not already had my own laptop. So first, I'll tell you guys, I use a MacBook Pro 16 inch as my main laptop. This is a very expensive laptop for me in Canadian dollars. It was just over $3,000. I'm not recommending that to anyone, but I just wanted a very high end laptop and that's what I've used. But in the past, I've used laptops that were $200, $300, $500. And honestly, most of them have been perfectly fine for a lot of the stuff that I needed to do related to programming. Anyways, the first machine that I found here on Amazon is coming in at 879 Canadian dollars. I think that's probably somewhere around 600, 650 US dollars. And this is the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14 inch laptop. So this is a touch panel as well. So it actually folds all the way over into a tablet, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It has an i5 quad core processor, 128 gig SSD, runs full Windows 10. And that's pretty much all it's showing me right here in the listing. But this looks like a great machine. It's got a Lenovo keyboard, which are known to be really good. And this is something that I would definitely think would be good value. Just, you know, quickly, brand, uh, Looking at the ratings here, five and four star, looks to be a fine machine and something that I think would be perfect for people with kind of a mid-range budget. So next I have a bit of a higher end laptop. This one is Lenovo Legion 5. It's a 15.6 inch gaming laptop. Uh, the main difference here when it says gaming, I believe is that it has a high refresh rate display. You don't need to look for this for programming at all, but 120 Hertz display just means that the pixels refresh faster. So if you're gaming, it's a better experience. But this has a Ryzen 7 processor in it, eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD, and a graphics card with four gigabytes of VRAM. And this is coming in at 1,029 Canadian dollars, which is probably about 750, 800 US dollars. So again, this looks like a great machine if you had a bit of a bigger budget this would be something i would recommend has the graphics card so you could do a little machine learning a little gaming content creation as well as a very fast processor eight gigs of ram and that high refresh rate display of course is nice next i have something that's a little bit cheaper again this is the hp envy uh, x360 two-in-one laptop so this is a tab 
tablet as well. Comes with 15.6 inch display, Ryzen 5 processor, eight gigabytes of memory, 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, it has a backlit keyboard and it runs full Windows 10. Again, good reviews. And these are the kind of laptops that I would be looking for and that I would personally recommend in kind of that mid tier range. Of course, there's definitely lower end laptops. I don't know much about the kind of low end spectrum, so I'm not gonna recommend any specific machines in that range. But I do know that following the recommendations I made earlier, you can probably find something that's about 400, 500 Canadian dollars. So maybe like 300 US that will be perfectly fine for programming, especially if you're just getting started and not doing anything crazy. So anyways, that has been this video. I would love to hear from you guys what you would recommend, any specific models, what machine you started to learn programming on. And if you found any mistakes in this video, of course, leave them down below. With that being said, if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you all in another YouTube video.